Hello, my citizen. Welcome to it. This is Len Extra Life for Grade 11, and we are doing physical sciences. If you're joining us now, welcome to it because we are here to learn more and learn extra. My name is AB because it is springtime and names just got shorter. Otherwise, I'm with Bra John. How's it, Abraham? I'm Abraham. fine. Thanks, and you. Just AB, call me John. AB, yes. AB. Hey, cool, man. Uh, <laughs> we, can't, we can't shorten your name. No, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, great to be with you this afternoon. I hope you're excited to do some work, some chemistry. Chemistry is always magic. And you know what they say about springtime? Mm -hmm. uh, there's songs about spring and lovers in the air. And Can I you won't sing? No, I won't no. sing. No. <laughs> uh, no, not today. You've not today. Show and uh, no, no, you're no, going to no. sing for us. Okay, so wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Chemistry. Yes. Magic. That's what we're doing today. Explosions. No, not explosions. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about explosions, but we're doing things about acids and bases. And I want you to get your thinking caps on because you know what? There are acids and bases all around us. And there's some really interesting and fun facts about acids and bases that you should know. I'm going to be posing some challenge questions for AB to post on the Facebook page. I want to see how many of you get these right. Okay. I've also had some myths, though, from other mindsets about assets. I hope they'll post them because last week I saw on, on the Facebook page as, as we're doing the practical. Oh, really? Some yeah. myths? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's try and unravel the. Let's bust the myths. Uh, <laughs> I, I know we're not allowed to say that other than <laughs> put them around the other way. But, uh, yeah, let's, let, let's unpack all that stuff and, and let's get going. Okay. All right. It, get your thinking caps on, as Mr. Uh, McBride has just said. It. Otherwise, Mindset is be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We are there. We have about 52,000 likes. And Mindset is chatting on the page. So make sure that you join the club because we are Team Mindset on Facebook.com forward slash Len Extra. Like the page, share the page with other Mindset and help one another on the page. You can also follow us on Twitter, of course, at Len Extra. But lastly, download your notes all for free. The first link will be on Facebook page, but you can also get them directly on lenextra.co.za forward slash live. Otherwise, Mr. John, let's do this. Right, guys, let's get going. So what do you know about acids and bases? Remember, uh, over the last couple of weeks, Tracy's been going through some introductory theory. Last week, she did some practical experiments showing you what happens when you add an acid to a base and if you have an indicator the color change well today we're going to, to do a couple of interesting things the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves about some applications of acids and bases and so uh, to start with applications of acids and bases base reactions where do we find these in our everyday life it's all very well having a nice theory about what's an acid, what's a base, but what's it useful for us? How can we benefit from them, and why is it important to know? And the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to look at some calculations. Now, guys, calculations and acids and bases, this section can fall into your exam or your test, end of term test, either under the acids and bases section or under the chemical calculations section, they call it, Quant uh, quantitative chemistry. So it can fall into both. And you, we'll be covering some of that revision about things like ratio, writing equations, or calculating moles, calculating concentration. So if you've missed it before, let's make sure that you get it right this afternoon. So, Abby, uh, have you ever wondered, there are, these, there are these flowers, and perhaps you can find a picture of them on, on uh, Google and, and post it as well. Mm -hmm. they're, they're called Christmas roses. Um, there is another name for them, uh, but I just remember the Christmas roses. But did you know that what's interesting about Christmas roses is that some of them are pink and some of them are purple. Hmm. Do you know why? They're the same flower. And if you take that one that is purple and you move it to a different part in your garden, it might end up being pink. Does it mean they're getting different light? Ah, no, no, let's keep the light all the same. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to do with the light. But perhaps you can post that. Let's try and work out. Guys, why are Christmas roses different colors? Any ideas? Well, Abby's going to find a picture. You'll post the question, and let's see if we can get the answer. I'll give it to you just now. Okay, the first topic, though, that I want to talk about um, this afternoon is I don't know how many of you like to eat fish and chips. 
What do you think? Slap chips? I'm a big fan. Hey, you're a big fan. <laughs> and James. Uh, James is as well. Um, <laughs> that's our director at the back, and, uh, and he's doing a brilliant job making sure that you get the very best of, of our little lesson here. So now, uh, uh, <laughs> slap chips at the back there. He's wanting his slap chips. Right? So, um, right, so what are we saying? When you have slap chips and you want to have some fish with it, uh, lots of people put salt and they put vinegar on the, yes. on the, on the, on the chips. Yes. Okay, vinegar, interesting. <laughs> but they put, put lemon juice on the fish. Uh, hmm. Did you know that? I've, I've heard of people who do that yeah. to, to, to just spice up the, fav the flavor. To, to flavor. Yeah, yeah, to give it some flavor. Now, uh, did you know that there are two acids involved in that very process? The slap chips with salt and vinegar and with the lemon juice on the fish. Ah, oh, that's quite interesting. <laughs> there are two acids. And you are wondering where we ever find acids. Well, there you are. Have some slap chips and, uh, and, and some lemon juice and you'll be taking in some acids. Now, the reason that people use lemon juice with fish is, you know what, sometimes, depends on how you cook it, but some people don't like the smell of fish. And I, I mean fresh fish as well. If you go into a supermarket or, and there's an area with a fish lying out, it, it doesn't kind of smell too good. Mm. You agree with I that? I agree, yes. Uh, and you want to remove that smell. Well, you can use some lemon juice. Ah, lemon juice and fish go together. And the reason why that happens is that lemons have something called citric acid in them. Okay? Citric acid. It's an acid. The fish have a chemical compound called an amine. Now, you don't have to know the structure of it. It's an organic substance. But it happens to be a base. And when you take the lemon juice and the amine and you react them together, you get rid of the smell of fish. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Hey, they neutralize <laughs> each other. That's, that's amazing. Now, here's one that, that, that I know that, that some guys will be, be quite interested in. And it is actually a very important uh, study. You know what, uh, there's been reports across the country, we know that we need to look after our infrastructure, and we know that uh, with the um, National Development Plan, the Millennial Development Plan, there's a whole lot of planning about developing infrastructure. But one of the things that we've got to be really careful about is our water. Now, water is a scarce commodity. It's a very scarce resource. And a lot of our sewage and industrial pollution gets into our river system. We haven't got unending supply of water. Problem is, how do we treat it? Now, within sewage, what you need to recognize is that sewage has some acidic components. So within the sewage itself, there are acidic things. So it's not very pleasant to smell. It's got sulfurish smells coming off, hydrogen sulfide, and that, that gives that like rotten egg gas smell. Okay? You don't want to go and live with that hanging over your head. So that's the acidic nature of it. And what we want to do is we want to neutralize it and clean it up. So what do we do? We add a base. So we add a base, and usually you add ash, okay, which has got a basic nature to it, or we can add something called soda ash. Okay? And the advantage of some of these components is that it also increases the amount of calcium in the water and so treats it as well. But what do you notice? We've got an acid over here and a base over there and they neutralize each other. So that's the process of acids and bases in sewage uh, treatment. Now, guys, don't think that this isn't important. We don't want to be in a city that can't cope with the sewage. So in spending infrastructure, in, in thinking about our environment, we need to find better ways to deal with it. That's how they're dealing with it at the moment. But I know that there are people out there that have got some really bright ideas for dealing with problems. 
and that's what we want to encourage. Science is about solving problems and solving them really well. Now, that p question about the plants. Yes. Christmas roses. Have you managed to find a picture? I found a picture, put that it also, I, I also got the other name uh, for, for, for Yeah, it. give me two. It's remind? called the Hello Bros. Okay, ha Halo Bros, yeah, might be. I can't remember if that's <laughs> the one that was in my head, but uh, th th we'll just have, have that for the moment. So, guys, can you answer that question? Why are some of them pink and some of them purple? Yeah, and yeah, they change. Uh, uh, some have you got answers. some answers? Yeah. Guess P. Chilana says it is because of the conditions of the soil, whether acid or not. Okay, yeah, so that may, that's a good answer. Yeah. So, so guys, yes, uh, the change of the soil pH... Okay, pH, remember, H is a measure of acidity. Numbers on the pH scale less than zero, uh, sorry, between zero and seven. Seven is the middle mo number, but between seven and zero and even below zero, uh, those are all acidic. But from seven up to 14, then those are basic. Now, if we have a very high concentration of acid rain, then the water that the plants absorb will be acidic. And if they're acidic, then they're going to change the color of the petals and the flowers. Now, here's something for you to do practically. If you go out into the garden, uh, don't please, please don't take your mom's favorite rose. <laughs> okay? Okay. But, but go out into the, even into the felt. Uh, th there will be cosmos quite soon. Uh, pick up some weeds that are flowering. Okay? Uh, <laughs> no, no, not that weed. Okay? Not, not that weed. Which uh, one, uh, Any other weed, but, <laughs> but just ordinary weeds, both the leaves and the flowers. Okay? And, and what I want you to do is, is hear something really interesting, and maybe you can reserve this for something to do during the September holidays, is collect a whole lot of these, keep them separate. Then take a kettle with boiling water, boil your, your water, cut the leaves up into little pieces, soak them in the water, and, t and leave them to stand for a little bit. Now what you're doing is you're extracting the chemicals inside the leaves or the flowers. And that is a chemical indicator. Now, you can see the same effect if you take tea. Soak it in hot water and leave it for a while. Now, here's the trick. Halve that amount of colored liquid and then add some lemon juice to the one and add some bicarbonate of soda to the other and watch the color change. You'll be surprised. There are masses of chemicals that are sensitive to pH. They change all the time. Does that answer the question, you think? Yes, it does, Okay. Brian. So inside the flower, inside the little petals, there's a chemical that is sensitive to the change of pH. In acid, it's one color, and in base, it's another color. Okay. I think is it's that to all, to, to all flowers, though? Well, look, you know what? It's, it's really interesting. And uh, the, the challenge is for the guys out there to go and do it. Take some photos of it and send us those photos. Put them on Facebook. Let's hear what different uh, color changes you've got. So take a color. This is the color that it was originally. This is the color in acid. This is the color in base. So you make a little bit of that natural indicator and divide it into three parts. And then take a picture of that. Now, please don't use your mother's wine glasses for that uh, or crystal chandeliers or anything like that. We don't want to br have any breakages. But uh, j just, just put it in some ordinary dishes and take some photos and, and, and we'll get some pictures from that. I really hope you'd watch that and do that. N nice challenge, eh? Hey, nice challenge. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's another one mm -hmm. I want to post. I want you to, to, to ask the learners out there. Guys, uh, here's something else. Any idea what it is that makes a machal taste like bitter? Okay? Machal. You know what machal is, eh? <laughs> Come no, on. No, John. Come on. That's it. Oh, machal. <laughs> machal. <laughs> hey? Come on, Abram. <laughs> machal, John. Machal. I'm going to teach you. Machal. Okay. Machal. Yes. I said it wrong. Good. Okay? You corrected me. Yes. So, guys, what makes that kind of, give that, that sharp taste? Fermentation. Uh, Hey, so you got an idea there, but right at the bottom, the, the, the idea is that we've got, even in, in mass, hey, uh, there's a process 
that things are changing, they're fermenting. But did you know that there's an acid there? There's an acid. Can you name the acid? In mass and mechal. Mechal. Mm. Okay? Mas and mechal. What about mkombo, Tijan? Hey, that's something else. I know what that <laughs> is. But I don't want to go there at the moment because that's got some really lethal stuff in it. And it's not got anything to do with acids and bases. So we won't go to that one. Uh, although it's all organic chemistry. Okay? So guys, remember what's happening there. Uh, we, we'll discuss that in a lot more detail in grade 12. So, but at the moment, what I was dealing with was acids and bases. So why are we talking like this? Because we're talking about everyday reactions. Did you know even inside your stomach, there's acid? That's part of the digestive process. If you're not sure about that, go to our, our, our page and go and look at some of the, th the video on digestion. There was one done on the 1st of May, I think, that was of a whole... Uh, pig's intestine. It was brilliant. You can get an idea of what the processes are that are happening inside of the digestive tract. Acids, bases, they're all part of our everyday life. But now, you know what? I can see that we're almost up for a break, but I want to introduce a little bit of a calculation. So before we go for the break, let's read a question through because here's a typical exam question. Now, maybe I know that, that the grade 11s are perhaps not as stressed as the grade 12s, mm -hmm. uh, but they're going to be in this boat next year when they're going to be facing their prelim exams. But at the moment, we're not worried too much about prelims, but we want to start getting some exam techniques. And maybe you've got end-of-term tests coming up in the next couple of weeks. Well, we're trying to help you prepare for those. So here's a challenge question. Here's a little question that could come up in an exam. Uh, and I want to take you through it and give you a few minutes during the ad break to see if you can handle it and you can answer it. So let's read it together. Good technique. Whenever you are given an exam question, uh, get your pencil, get your pen, and see if you can identify things as we read through them. So it says HCl. Now I know that that means that's hydrochloric acid. So I'm just going to write the acid, and I remember it's hydrochloric acid. And NaOH, that's sodium hydroxide. And this is a, a base, but it's a soluble base. And remember a soluble base? Another word for a soluble base is an alkali. Okay. So they react together according to the following balanced equation. Now guys, even if they say to you it's a balanced equation, make sure that you check that it is balanced. So I'm going to quickly check it. I say one hydrogen here and another, that's two hydrogens, and I've got two hydrogens there. One chlorine, one chlorine, I'm happy with that. One sodium, one sodium, one oxygen, one oxygen is balanced. During a titration, 6,5 centimeters cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid neutralizes exactly 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide solution. If the concentration of the HCl solution is 0 0,2 moles per decimeter cube, calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Well, there you go. That's a mouthful, but it's a real exam challenge. And I'm sure in the ad break, you can start getting your facts together to make sure that you can do it. See how quickly you can do it. Thanks, Ivy. Right, it's already posted on Facebook. Mine it says be on the page. But before we go to that break, let me tell you that we have spring school that is starting from the 23rd to the 27th of September. So make sure that you join us on the live shows because we'll be doing also some special exam questions with great experts. So you don't want to miss out. Make sure that you get all the details on our Facebook page. But for now, don't move. Welcome back, Mindsetters. Now I have some great response, uh, responses over Facebook over what Joanne has been uh, getting over and the questions that he posed uh, before the break. Some answers for yeah, you. Yeah, let's, let's see. What, what are the answers? What are, are people saying? Right, most uh, we've got Matume and Neo saying it's lactic acid which is added to milk for, for milk and mass. Okay, excellent. Now let's just correct it, uh, make sure that we've got the picture correct. Uh, in milk, we have something that's called a milk sugar, which is lactose. And you, you'll have heard of people that are called lactose intolerant. Huh? They can't take milk. 
Uh, there's, some, there's some famous characters who can't take milk. Uh, and, and so they're allergic to milk. So they, they, they stay off lactose. They're lactose intolerant. They break out in all sorts of uh, swellings and, and their skin goes itchy and it's horrible. So they're lactose intolerant. What happens is when your milk starts to ferment or go sour, the sugar changes to lactic acid. Okay? Lactic acid, which is in milk, that is going sour. And that's, that's, the, that's the acid. Now, the interesting thing is that if we allow that, that acid to continue to ferment, we will get an alcohol. Mm. That's what we were talking about <laughs> a little earlier on. But <laughs> we're, we're not going there to that. So, the acid is that we're talking about, and that's what you find in mass and machal. Uh, and uh, you will enjoy it. Okay. So, when you're having a sip, remember what's inside it. Any other questions? I have a question from Kamukhelo Felicia Rapu. Yes. Uh, Kamukhelo says, what is titration? Okay, Kamukhelo, uh, it's very important. I'm so glad you've asked that question. Because we mentioned it here and I underlined it on the board. So, let's have a look at the question. It says, we've got an acid and a base reacting together uh, according to the following during a titration. Now, a titration is simply a chemical process where you take a, a drop at a time. You've got your base and you add to it your acid. In this case, it says during a titration, 6,5 centimeters cubed of dilute neutralized exactly 25 milli, uh, centimeters cubed of the base. So you have 25 cent, uh, centimeters cubed of the base of the, al of the alkali. So usually it's in a, a flask like this. And there's our 25, 25 uh, uh, centimeters cubed, 25 mils of your sodium hydroxide. And what happens is that what we're going to do is we're going to take one drop of acid and we add it to it. And then we take another drop and we add it to it. And usually you have an indicator in here as well. And when you choose your indicator so that exactly when there are exactly the right number of drops of acid and bases to neutralize each other so that you don't have any more reactants. Remember these things over here are called reactants. When all of these are gone, so they don't exist anymore, they've combined, and you've only got that, that's the point that we say completely neutralized. Completely neutralized. It means that there's not even one little sodium hydroxide or hydroxide molecule uh, iron floating around. Every one of the hydroxide ions has found an acid or an H plus partner. Now, uh, AB, I don't yes. know if you've had this, this situation. I know you're a good looking guy. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I know that you probably like to party a bit eh? uh, uh, in your younger days. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but have you ever been to a situation where you go to a formal or you go to a little informal gathering where there's some music and the guys outnumber the girls? Yeah. Uh, you've been to that yeah. situation. Yeah. And, and, and is that, that really nice? No, not at all. Uh, uh, you, you, you'd <laughs> rather have it the other way around. Yes. Eh? Yeah. But, but actually the best is if we have the same number of guys and the same number of girls. Eh? Well, it depends. It depends. <laughs> uh, it depends. Uh. But, but in this case, th that's our analogy here. So what we're going to say is we're going to say that, look, if we take sodium hydroxide and we take hydrochloric acid, what's going to happen is we want one of those to match up with one of those, and that's going to form HOH. And what's HOH? Any idea? HOH? Well, look, it's another way of writing H2O, which is water. So we know water is neutral. It is the pH equal to 7, and it is neutral. Okay, so what we're looking at is here, we, in a base or an alkali, we have lots of these. 
there's a high concentration of those, high concentration. In the acid, there's a high concentration of these. And when we combine them, we want to make sure that they match each other out so that they join together. And look what else is left over. We've got that thing, and we've got that thing. That one will be, this one is positive, this one is negative. They join together and we form sodium chloride. So I hope you can see in a titration, it's a really a balancing act. It's about getting the right number of things to join together. Now, I hope you've got it and understand that even though you've got sodium hydroxide and you've got hydrochloric acid, the hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, Sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali, so it will form its ions, but we need to have the right number. They don't have to be of the same concentration. We need to make sure in the solution of water that we've got, we've got the same number so that they all match off. And that's the calculation we're going to do. So let's just get that clear. And uh, I hope that's answered the question about titration. So during the titration, we've got the volume of the acid, because it was dilute acid, so I'm going to write down here, volume of acid, just let me, volume of acid was equal to 6,5 centimeters cubed. My volume of base, and I just could call it base even though it's alkali, was 25 centimeters cubed, and it was exactly, that was the exact neutralization. The other thing that we are told, is we're told the concentration of the uh, the concentration of the acid is 0 0,2 mole per decimeter cubed. So we know the concentration of the acid of HCl is going to be equal to 0 0,2 mole per decimeter cubed. Just want to check that I've written that down correctly. I think I have. 0, 0,2, I don't want to make a mistake. Okay, so guys, what we've got to make sure of is that we partner up the acid and the base together so that we've got the same number that they neutralize. How are we going to do it? I want to give you a foolproof method, a safe method. Now, you might read in your textbook that you've got this funny equation with a ratio and Na and Nb and... Guys, I don't buy that. Take it slowly, work it out step for step, and you will never go wrong. In the first place that I start, don't make any tricks. I write the balanced equation. So I'm going to say the balanced equation, uh, HCl plus NaOH, to give me NaCl plus H2O. And what I'm going to recognize is that from the balanced equation, that one molecule of that or one mole of that will react with one mole of that to produce one mole to produce one mole. This isn't always the same. What it's saying is that in this case, they're in the same ratio. One is to one is to one. So that means that if I've used up one mole of acid, then I must neutralize that with one mole of base. And I will produce one mole of salt and one mole of water. So the question now, guys, is how many moles of acid have I got at the beginning? Well, how do I work out moles? And that's the critical thing. If I've got concentration over there and I've got volume, I can work out concentration. And, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's go and try it. I'm going to just leave that up there for the moment. I'm going to remind you that concentration is the number of moles divided by the volume. And we're wanting to work out the number of moles of acid. So I'm going to substitute in, first of all, I'm going to say 0, 0,2 is equal to, I don't know the number of moles, and the volume here, what was the volume given? It was given as 6,5 centimeters cubed. Hey, I can't work with centimeters cubed. What is the SI unit for volume? It's not centimeters cubed. It's decimeters cubed in this case. Because concentration is given as mole per decimeter cubed. Now, you need to remember 
that a centimeter cubed is like a milliliter, and a, millili and a, a liter is like a, a decimeter. So how many milliliters in a liter? Well, there are a thousand. How many centimeters cubed in a decimeter cubed? A thousand. So we divide by a thousand. And when I divide by a thousand, I'm going to just simply say that's six comma five times ten to the minus three decimeters cubed. Don't forget to change your units. And we put that in, and we're going to say it's six comma five times ten to the minus three. And now we've got to solve for n. So, guys, I'm setting it out, wrote the equation down, substituted in the value, and now I'm rearranging. The reason for that is I've now got my marks for substitution and my marks for the formula. If I happen to make a silly mistake, I will still get my marks. Now, this is the moles of acid, and I'm going to say the moles of acid is equal to 0, 0,2 times 6,5 times 10 to the minus 3. So, let's go call out the calculator because I'm not going to trust myself to do that in my head. I'm going to say 0, 0,2 times 6, 5 exponent minus 3. Minus 3 equals. And change it and it gives me 1, 3 times 10 to the minus 3. 1, 3 times 10 to the minus 3. 1 comma 3 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Okay? I'm not worried about changing it back into, into a fraction. I can work in, decima, uh, in, in scientific notation. But what does that tell me? Guys, you've got to recognize this. That if I've got 1 comma 3 times 10 to the minus 3 of those in moles. So there's my number of moles. If I've got that moles, then I'm going to have to have... How many of these? I've got to have the same. It's 1 to 1. 1 comma 3 times 10 to the minus 3. I've got to use that. That's my number of moles. So if I know that's my number of moles, remember the original question was, can you calculate the concentration? Concentration of sodium hydroxide. And we now know the number of moles, and we know the volume just going to change the volume here to 25 times 10 to the minus 3 and let's now calculate the concentration so I'm going to use exactly the same little uh, formula but I'm going to change it this way around I'm going to say my concentration of sodium hydroxide is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume which in this case is 1 comma 3 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 25 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so let's put it on the calculator now and let's see where we go with that. So there's my answer and I want to divide that answer by 25 exponent minus 3. And I get an answer of 0, 0,052. 0, 0,052. Right, let's write that down. So I'm going to say the concentration is 0, 0,052. Don't forget the units. Mole per decimeter cubed. Excellent. So let's just compare it and let's make sure we understand and, and I've got it clear. Look at the concentration of the acid. The concentration of the acid was 0, 0,2. And we used only 6.5 centimeters. 6.5 centimeters cubed. 6.5 centimeters cubed. But look, we've used about four times as much base. Okay, we've used about four times as much base. And that should tell you that the base is less concentrated uh, than the acid. And that's exactly what it is. I hope you can see that. And if we took 0, 0,2, and I guess if I divided 0, 0,2, let's just check this. I'm just doing it over here. Divided by 4, uh, what do we get? We get 0, 0,05. Do you see what I've done? 
I've done an estimation. And I've done and shown you that my answer is reasonable. My answer is about right, so I can be confident and I can move on. Okay, Abby, I hope yes. that's, that's the end of that question. I just want to say well done to the mindsetters that got the, the answers. Even before the break, we had Excellent. one mindset that posted the answer. That, that's brilliant. So, uh, guys, make sure you've got the notes because the next question's coming up after the break. Right, well said. But on that note, let me just tell you, if you haven't nominated your teacher, this is your opportunity. We are having Stars in Education Awards, whereby you can nominate your teacher. If you have that best teacher whom you think, you know what, this teacher, this teacher deserves an award. The closing date for all application is the 7th of September. I have posted the link on our Facebook page, so make sure you go over the page and make sure that you tell your teachers, you nominate them, share the love because they deserve to be appreciated. Thanks to all the mindsetters that are participating on the page, and also a big shout out to uh, so who's watching the show and learning more with us. Otherwise, see you after the break. Welcome back, Prematriculants. Now, looking at the page, I have some questions for you, John. Are you ready? I'm ready as always, so bring them on. Let's start with this one. Very interesting. Does tea have an acid or an base? Okay, very good question. Tea is a, is a flower. It comes from leaves, and, and we crush those leaves up, and we, we make a brew, just like I was suggesting that you do. Now, there are a number of different plants, but the critical ingredient that is used that gives tea its flavor is something called tannin. It gives its flavor and its color. It is slightly acidic. It's not a, a proper acid, but it is just slightly acidic. Okay. All right. Thank you, Masbule Lekregiso, for that question. Here's another one from Benson J. Is the salt formed soluble or not in water? Okay. So in this case, because we were using a soluble uh, alkali, we were using a soluble base and an acid, then the salt is soluble. Okay. In most cases where you get acids and bases, you will react them. They will form soluble salts. If it were the case that you would get an insoluble salt, then it doesn't con the reaction doesn't con proceed very well. Okay? So it's not the best way to make insoluble salts. We use this me these methods to make soluble salts and simply evaporate off the water to collect the crystals. Uh, but for example, if you react calcium hydroxide with sulfuric acid, you'll get calcium sulfate, which is slightly insoluble. And it doesn't give you as much of a reaction as we would like. Uh, and it's not very nice to use that to get an indicator reaction because then uh, the, the cloudiness of the insoluble uh, salt starts to interfere with your titration. So we, we try and avoid those ones. All right. Can okay. Any others? Last one. Yeah. Um, from Ntalo Ntle. Is water neutral acidic or an, a, a, a base? Okay, very good question. Water has a pH of 7. It's neutral. Okay? But in terms of the uh, Bronsted-Lowry theory, water can act as an acid because it's able to be a proton donor or it can act as a base. It is able to be a proton acceptor. So it can either gain or lose hydrogen ions. Very important. Okay, shall we move on? Yes. Well, actually, you know what? I've got a question to throw back at the guys. <laughs> guys, here's, here, here's one for you. We know that acids, and everyone's got the idea, if something dissolves and corrodes, then the thing doing the corroding must be acidic. That's not necessarily true. Bases, even strong alkalis, are very corrosive as well. Okay, so bear that in mind. But I want to find out from you, does anybody know what in most acids, something like gold will not dissolve? Platinum does not dissolve in ordinary acids. So you could put your gold ring or your gold uh, jewelry into hydrochloric acid, into nitric acid, into sulfuric acid. It will not dissolve. Okay. But there is an acid that does dissolve gold. And it's very important because we mining gold. Gold is mined here in Johannesburg and we're able to refine it. 
And there's an acid that is used in the refining of gold to dissolve the gold so we can get as much gold out of the uh, conglomerate where the gold particles are stuck and the other bits that have got trapped in between them. So we dissolve the gold. What's the acid we use to dissolve gold? It's a really interesting question. Very interesting indeed. Okay, <laughs> so don't try it with your mother's ring though, okay? <laughs> uh, she's not going to be very happy with you. Now, we talked about slop chips earlier and everyone was getting hungry in the control room. Yeah. Uh, but here's a question. We're not going to have time to do it because it's so similar to the previous one. So I'm going to skip it. But uh, here's a word that I want to just explain. Ethanoic acid. So ethanoic acid is an organic acid. Okay. It has a formula of CH3, C double O O H. So CH3, C double O H. That is also called acetic acid. And to the slap chips brigade, it's called vinegar. Okay. So if you are told to go and get some ethanoic acid to have with your supper tonight, then um, <laughs> go and get the vinegar. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to leave this term. one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I tell you what. Well, th that one is in the notes, and we'll post the answer uh, at the end of the, the lesson and make sure that you can check it out for yourself. But question three is rather interesting. So I want to get to it because we're running out of time. So let's go over here, and let's make sure that we are on track. So I don't know how much of question three we're going to do, but I'm going to try and go a little quicker than I was, but still make sure you follow me. So it first of all says, what mass, so they're asking for mass, what mass of sodium hydroxide is needed to prepare a 200 centimeter cubed solution with a concentration of 0 0,4 mole per decimeter cubed? Guys, this is a, a, a question that is often asked in the exam, can even be asked in a practical exam, because a solution that is of a known concentration with a known concentration is called a standard solution. Standard solution. So we want to know what mass is going to dissolve in 200 centimeters cubed to give us <coughs> a concentration of 0 0,4 mole per decimeter cubed. So what have we got? We know concentration is the number of, number of moles over the volume, but we also know that number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass. So we don't know the number of moles that we need. We want to find the mass, we want to find the number of moles, and then we want to find the con to get the right concentration. When you make a standard solution, you've got to measure out accurately the mass of substance, and then add a little bit of water at a time, dissolve all the solute, remember the substance that is being dissolved, the solid stuff is called the solute, the, in the, the water that you're adding is called the solvent, and you dissolve it in a uh, volumetric flask, so everything dissolves, and then you add slowly, 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 until you get to the line on the volumetric flask, which will be exactly the 200 uh, centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's the process. The calculation is a combination of these two equations. Now, what I've learned is that you can combine these, and you can do it sim by simple substitution, and you can find that mass is equal to concentration times the volume times the molar mass. Check it out and make sure that I've got it right. You'll see over here that um, if we take this one and we rewrite it for number of moles, we substitute it over there, you will see that you can get that equation. So mass is equal to concentration times volume times molar mass. We want to find the mass. So what have we got to substitute in? Simply got to substitute in the required concentration. The required concentration, 0, 0,4. What was the volume we required? Now, hey, they try to trick us. Centimeters cubed again. We want not 200. 
but we want to divide the 200 by 1,000. So if we divide it by 1,000, it's going to be 0, 0,2. So I'm going to take 0, 0,4 concentration times 0, 0,2. Now times the molar mass. Hey, where do I get the molar mass from? Well, guys, you need to remember from your stoichiometry and your section on moles that you look on the periodic table. So if I go to the periodic table here, I'm wanting the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. Sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is 1. So if I add those two together, look at the periodic table, and I can get that the molar mass of sodium hydroxide turns out to be equal to 23 plus 16 plus 1. Now, on your periodic table, there might be two decimal places. Please include them. I'm just doing it on this older periodic table that was rounded off. But I also remember that the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is very close to 40 grams per mole. So I'm going to substitute that in there, the 40 from that. And if I multiply this out, see what I get. I'm going to say, right, let's move it across. I'm going to say 0, 0,4 multiplied by 0, 0,2 multiplied by 40 and it tells me I need exactly 3,2 3,2 grams of sodium hydroxide 3,2 grams 3,2 grams of sodium hydroxide okay so there we've got the first part of the question done and I hope you followed that it's a really important calculation so let's move on, see what the next part is of this question is. It says, calculate the concentration of a dilute, hey, dilute solution of 60 centimeters cubed of this solution is diluted by adding 100 centimeters cubed of water. Now guys, if we want to find concentration, what we need to recognize is that there's an easy way to do this. And I really want to show this to you because I find it useful and I find it very interesting. Whenever I get a, a question like this, I say to myself, well, how many moles have I got to start with? Any acid-base question, you say, what moles am I given? So I know that the number of moles is equal to the concentration times the volume. You got that. Now remember, we've just worked, we were given in the first part of the question what the concentration was. The concentration was 0, 0,4 mole per decimeter cubed, and it was 200 centimeters cubed. So we want the concentration was equal to, let's just make this clear, the concentration was uh, I just need to check that. Sorry, I've just lost it. So I'm going to make sure that I've got it right. It was 0, 0,4 uh, mole per decimeter cubed. And the volume was 200, uh, the volume was 200 centimeters cubed, which was equal to 0, 0,2 decimeters cubed. Okay, so we've got that on that side. If I know the number of moles of the stuff that I've got at the beginning, before I add the water, what's going to happen to the number of moles after I've added water? You're going to say to me, the moles stay the same. And that's exactly the point. So what I need to recognize, this was at the start. Okay? And secondly, what I can say is at dilution, at dilution, what I've got is exactly the same equation. N is equal to C times V. The concentration is going to change. It's going to be a new concentration. What about the volume? The volume is going to change because look what it said. It said I've got to add, it was only 60 centimeters cubed of this. It was 60 centimeters cubed of this. So 60 centimeters plus 100 
So I'm going to need to make sure that I use the right volume. I don't want to use this. I want 60 centimeters cubed as well. So it looks like I need to just make sure that I'm only going to change this to 0 0,6 as well. 0 0,06, 60 centimeters cubed. This has got to be divided by 1,000, and I'm running out of time. But I hope you can see that the number of moles is the same. And so because of that, I can say the concentration is equal to the initial concentration times the initial volume is equal to the concentration at the final times the final volume. Guys, go and substitute the values into the equation and you'll get the right answer. Remember what you're trying to do is try to find the final concentration after dilution. So this is before and this is after. Now, unfortunately, we've run out of time. You've got the concentration, you've got the volumes, and you've got that one. Substitute the value in, and you'll get the final concentration. AB? Thank you so much, It's Joanne. a pleasure. There was the last thing. Anybody got the answer for dissolving gold? Yes. Aqua Regia. Aqua Regia. That's correct. Well done. Thanks, Mindsetters. It's been great being with you. Very smart Mindsetters. Otherwise, thank you very much. Unfortunately, time has just ran out. But otherwise, we just want to appreciate the time we had with you, learning with you. Great 11s. From us to you, we just want to say peace. talk a little bit about explosions but we're doing things about acids and bases and I want you to get your thinking caps on because you know what there are acids and bases all around us and there's some really interesting and fun facts about acids and bases that you should know I'm going to be posing some challenge questions for AB to post on the Facebook page. I want to see how many of you get these right. Okay. I've also had some myths, though, from other mindsetters about assets. I hope they'll post them because last week I saw on, on the Facebook page as, as they're doing the practical. Oh, really? Some yeah. myths? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's try and unravel the. Let's bust the myths. <laughs> I, I know we're not allowed to say that other than <laughs> put them around the other way. But, uh, yeah, let's, let, let's unpack all that stuff and, and let's get going. Okay. All right. It, get your thinking caps on, as Mr. Uh, McBride has just said. It. Otherwise, Mindsetters, be on Facebook. Mm. We are there. We have about 52,000 likes and Mindsetters chatting on the page. So make sure that you join the club because we are Team Mindset on Facebook.com forward slash Len Extra. Like the page, share the page with other Mindsetters and help one another on the page. You can also follow us on Twitter, of course, at Len Extra. But lastly, download your notes all for free. The first link will be on Facebook page, but you can also get them directly on lenextra.co.za forward slash live. Otherwise, Mr. John, let's do this. Right, guys, let's get going. So what do you know about acids and bases? Remember, uh, over the last couple of weeks, Tracy's been going through some introductory theory. Last week, she did some practical experiments showing you what happens when you add an acid to a base and if you have an indicator the color change well today we're going to, to do a couple of interesting things the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves about some applications of acids and bases and so uh, to start with applications of acids and bases base reactions where do we find these in our everyday life it's all very well having a nice theory about what's an acid what's a base but what's it useful for us? How can we benefit from them and why is it important to know? And the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to look at some calculations. Now guys, calculations and acids and bases, this section can fall into your exam or your test, end of term test, either under the acids and bases section or under the chemical calculations section, they call it Quant uh, quantitative chemistry. So it can fall into both. And you, we'll be covering some of that revision about things like ratio, writing equations, or calculating moles, calculating concentration. So if you've missed it before, let's make sure that you get it right this afternoon. So, Abby, uh, have you ever wondered, there are, these, there are these flowers, and perhaps you can find a picture of them on, on uh, Google and, and post it as well. Mm -hmm. they're, they're called Christmas roses. Um, there is another name for them, uh, but I just remember the Christmas roses. But did you know that what's interesting about Christmas roses is that some of them are pink 
and some of them are purple. Mm. Do you know why? They're the same flower. And if you take that one that is purple and you move it to a different part in your garden, it might end up being pink. Hello, my sisters, and welcome to it. This is Len Extra Life for Great 11, and we are doing physical sciences. If you're joining us now, welcome to it because we are here to learn more and learn extra. My name is AB because it is springtime and names just got shorter. Otherwise, I'm with Brad John. How's it, Abraham? I'm Abram. quite excited to just AB, call you hey, Brad John. AB, yes. AB. Hey, cool, man. Uh, <laughs> we, can't, we can't shorten your name. No, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, great to be with you this afternoon. I hope you're excited to do some work, some chemistry. Chemistry is always magic. And you know what they say about springtime? Mm -hmm. uh, there's songs about spring and love is in the air. And Can I you won't sing? No, I won't no? sing. No, <laughs> uh, no not today. You not today. Show uh, no, no, You're no, going to no. sing for us. Okay, so wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Chemistry. Yes. Magic. That's what we're doing today. Explosions. No, not explosions. <laughs> Does it mean they're getting different light? Ah, no, no, let's keep the light all the same. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to do with the light. But perhaps you can post that. Let's try and work out. Guys, why are Christmas roses different colors? Any ideas? Well, AB's going to find a picture. You'll post the question, and let's see if we can get the answer. I'll give it to you just now. Okay, the first topic, though, that I want to talk about um, this afternoon is I don't know how many of you like to eat fish and chips. What do you think? Slap chips? I'm a big fan. Hey, you're a big fan. <laughs> and James. Uh, James is as well. Um, <laughs> that's our director at the back, and, uh, and he's doing a brilliant job making sure that you get the very best of, of our little lesson here. So now, uh, uh, <laughs> slap chips at the back there, he's wanting his slap chips. Right? So, um, right, so what are we saying? When you have slap chips and you want to have some fish with it, uh, lots of people put salt and they put vinegar on the, yes. on, the, on, the, 